Amtrak's century-old Connecticut River Bridge, one of the biggest choke points on the Northeast Corridor, is finally being replaced. This aging span carries more than 50 trains a day, from high-speed Acela to commuter and freight, but constant breakdowns and speed restrictions have made it a costly headache. Now, backed by $1.3 billion in federal funding, Amtrak is racing to replace it with a sleek, fixed-span bridge built for speed, safety, and reliability. The upgrade is coming sooner than you think, but will it truly fix one of the busiest rail corridors in America and redefine the future of travel along the East Coast? Let's find out in today's episode. All right, before we dive deeper, let's step back a bit and talk about the history and background of this old bridge, Old Connecticut River Bridge. The Connecticut River Bridge is one of those unsung pieces of infrastructure you probably never think about until it fails. Sitting between Old Saybrook and Old Lyme, Connecticut, this bridge is smack in the middle of Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. If you've ever taken the train between Boston and New York, chances are you've crossed it without giving it a second thought. But here's the kicker. That bridge was built back in 1907. Yep, more than 115 years ago. That's like driving a Model T on today's highways. It's technically possible, but far from ideal. Back in its day, the bridge was actually considered a pretty clever piece of engineering. It was built as a movable hoist bridge, meaning it could be raised to let ships pass underneath. At that time, it was cutting edge, but technology doesn't exactly hold up now. The bridge sits only about 18 feet above the river when it's closed, which means it has to open constantly for boat traffic. And here's where the headaches start. Every time it opens or closes, there's a chance something goes wrong. And when it does, it's not just a minor hiccup, it's a full-on disruption. Trains stack up on both sides, Boats sit idle waiting for clearance, and delays ripple down the entire Northeast Corridor. So with all those issues the bridge has been having, it's clear that patching it up just won't cut it anymore. That's why they came up with a brand new design. Before we continue, we'd love your support. This is our new railway channel, and we're aiming for 3,000 subscribers. If you're passionate about rail infrastructure and transit news, make sure to hit subscribe and join the journey. Your support means the world. Thank you. Connecticut River Bridge Replacement Project Instead of patching up an aging bridge, Amtrak is going all in on a completely new structure. The replacement bridge will be a fixed span bridge. It will be built about 50 feet above the river, allowing boats to move freely underneath without trains having to stop. And this won't be a simple swap. The new bridge will have two modern railroad tracks, modern signaling, overhead wires, power, communications, and all the rail infrastructure you'd expect on a modern, high-capacity corridor. It's designed for trains to travel at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour, a huge jump from the current limit of 45 miles per hour. Of course, building something like this isn't cheap. The total cost of replacing the Connecticut River Bridge is about $1.3 billion. A large portion of that is being paid for with federal funds, thanks to an infrastructure bill passed in Washington that has pumped money into similar projects across the country. The Federal Railroad Administration alone has given Amtrak $826 million in grants to spur massive construction. What's more, Amtrak itself is investing its own money, and the state of Connecticut has also pitched in, recognizing the importance of the bridge to both local residents and the national rail network. And none of this happened overnight. Planning for the replacement has been underway for years. Back in 2020, Amtrak received a $65 million federal grant to cover just the initial design, environmental studies, and preparatory work. That investment is essentially starter fuel to ensure all the paperwork, permits, and engineering are in place when the big bucks finally roll in. Now that the plans are set, let's see how far along they are with actually building the new bridge. Current Situation So, as of mid-2025, the Connecticut River Bridge Replacement Project is in full swing. Phase 1 starts in late summer 2024 and will run until around 2028. Crews have set up temporary approach bridges and trestles, and they're fabricating huge 150-foot steel girders for the new spans. They've drilled 6- and 8-foot shafts into the rock, poured 400-foot retaining walls, and built coffer dams to support the structure. To handle the heavy lifting, two massive Manitowoc crawler cranes, each with a 275-ton capacity and a 160-foot boom, are working off barges in the river. Temporary power and communication systems are also in place to keep things moving. On top of that, they're doing their part for the environment, building new fishing piers at nearby state parks. 
Even with all this action, the team is working super hard to keep trains running without delays along the Northeast Corridor. They're scheduling work carefully so boats can still pass under the bridge without a hitch. The goal? A brand new electrified two-track movable bridge ready between 2028 and 2031, modern, reliable, and built to last. But of course, it's not all smooth sailing. There are some real challenges they're facing along the way. Challenges. Among the most significant are meeting stringent environmental requirements, including the removal of 200 acres of invasive reeds to restore wetlands, protected vegetation in the work area, and compliance with seasonal restrictions on underwater work to protect aquatic ecosystems. The shortage of marine construction barges along the East Coast, combined with recent hurricanes and other emergencies, also presents logistical challenges in scheduling and resource mobilization. Maintaining uninterrupted rail service along this busy corridor requires careful management of monorail failures throughout the construction process to minimize disruptions to passenger and freight operations. Additionally, coordinating construction near an active waterway requires careful planning to ensure safety and maintain navigation. Finally, the aging condition of the existing bridge requires ongoing maintenance to avoid delays while the replacement is underway, adding to the operational complexity of the project. Even with those hurdles, the payoff will be huge. Here's why this new bridge will make a big difference in the long run. Benefits in the future. First, reliability will be greatly improved. The current movable bridge is prone to problems opening and closing its doors, but the new fixed span bridge will eliminate that problem, ensuring thousands of commuters and travelers get to work, school, and appointments on time, improving the quality of life for the entire region. Speed is another major benefit, as trains will be able to travel faster than they do now, meaning time savings for tens of thousands of passengers each day. This will shorten travel times on one of the busiest rail corridors in the country, making rail a more attractive option for both commuters and long-distance travelers. Safety will also be improved, both on land and on water. The new bridge's increased ground clearance will improve navigation by allowing ships to pass without leaning against the bridge reducing the risk of collisions or accidents. For Amtrak and the rail operators, the project will cut down on routine maintenance and emergency repairs, saving millions of dollars in long-term maintenance. Beyond the technical improvements, the new bridge will also provide broader economic and social benefits. It will connect Boston, New York, and the surrounding areas, and promote greater regional trade. Environmentally, Smoother operations will reduce idling and wasted fuel and reduce emissions along the entire corridor. In short, the replacement project will transform an aging bottleneck into a high-performance, future-ready infrastructure that will benefit passengers, freight, boaters, and the entire Northeast Corridor. For over a century, one aging bridge in New Jersey has been the single biggest headache for Amtrak and NJ Transit riders breaking down, jamming open, and causing hundreds of delays on the busiest rail line in America. But now, a $2.3 billion solution is finally on the way and will launch soon. The new Portal North Bridge, taller, stronger, and built to last, promises to end this Portal Bridge nightmare once and for all. Could this massive project be the key to unlocking a faster, more reliable future for rail travel along the Northeast Corridor? Let's find out in today's episode and we are on the trains team. Why the Portal Bridge matters. To understand the importance of this project, we first need to step back and look at the old bridge itself. The Portal Bridge was built in 1910 over the Hackensack River in Kearney, New Jersey. It was state-of-the-art for its time, a swing bridge that could rotate open to let ships pass. But more than a century later, it's a glaring weak point in the Northeast Corridor, which is the busiest passenger rail line in the entire United States. Every single day, more than 450 trains and around 200,000 passengers rely on this two-track bridge. That includes Amtrak's Acela and Northeast Regional Services, plus NJ Transit commuter trains feeding into New York Penn Station. It's an essential artery, yet the design of the bridge requires it to open about 300 times a year to let river traffic through. And every time it opens, there's a risk it won't close correctly. When that happens, trains are stranded, passengers are delayed, and the entire corridor grinds to a halt. That's where the Portal North Bridge comes in. The new bridge design. Unlike its predecessor, the new structure is a fixed-span bridge standing roughly 50 feet tall. 
that height allows ships to pass underneath freely without requiring any moving parts. No more openings, no more jams, no more delays caused by mechanics that should have been retired decades ago. The new bridge is about 2.5 miles long when you include its approaches, and it doubles the capacity from two tracks to four. The design uses tight arch trusses, a style that combines durability with modern aesthetics. Once complete, trains will be able to cross the Hackensack River at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. That means less congestion, fewer breakdowns, and a smoother ride for hundreds of thousands of passengers. And because it's being built with modern materials and methods, it's expected to last well into the next century, just like its predecessor, only without the chronic headaches. In many ways, this is more than just a bridge. It's a symbol of whether the United States can still deliver large-scale rail projects in the 21st century. So, how is the project actually going? Timeline and construction progress. Construction officially began in August 2022. By May 2024, less than two years later, crews had completed about 50% of the work, an unusually fast pace for an American infrastructure project. By the end of 2024, 70% of the major components were finished, including foundations, retaining walls, and large sections of the steel and concrete beams for the approaches. In November 2024, the second of three massive tide arches was installed. Each arch measures more than 400 feet long, weighs thousands of tons, and had to be transported by barge up the Hackensack River. Installing them required floating cranes and precise engineering. By February 2025, the third and final arch was locked into place, completing the main frame of the bridge. Today, the project is roughly 80% complete. In just a few weeks, the site went from a bare platform to a solid bridge frame with 800 tons of ballast and more than 1,200 feet of track already in place. Now the focus has shifted to fine-tuning. More than 100 skilled workers from Dock Builders Local 1556 are on site, finishing the remaining steel girders, laying the main track, pulling overhead wires, and installing signaling systems. Even secondary tasks, like constructing the overpass over the Newark-Jersey City Turnpike, are underway. At the same time, engineering teams are carrying out quality checks and preparing for the demolition of the old bridge once the new one is ready. If the schedule holds, the first track of the new bridge will open for service in March 2026. The second track is expected in February 2027, and by the end of that year, the entire structure will be fully operational. Finally, in July 2028, the original Portal Bridge, after 115 years of service, will be demolished. That's the roadmap. But like any massive infrastructure project, the journey isn't without obstacles. The challenges. First, track closures have been far more frequent than expected. Planners initially estimated just nine double track closures over five years. Instead, the reality has been over 300 single track closures and more than 100 double closures. For passengers, that means frequent disruptions, longer commutes, and plenty of frustration. Second, project oversight hasn't been perfect. The Amtrak Office of Inspector General reported that the workload was underestimated and that coordination between Amtrak and NJ Transit has been bumpy. At times, financial data was delayed by up to nine months, making it nearly impossible to monitor budgets and track spending in real time. And of course, there's the old bridge itself. In 2018 alone, it had to open and close 15 times, each one creating new risks for breakdowns and delays. This is why the fixed design of the new Portal North Bridge is so important. It permanently removes that source of disruption. But the challenges don't end there. The bridge crosses through the Hackensack Meadowlands, a sensitive wetland ecosystem. Construction requires permits and environmental oversight from the Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Coast Guard, and the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. That means endless paperwork and reviews, each one adding time and cost. Then, there are the ever-present risks of cost overruns and supply chain delays. Infrastructure projects of this scale are notorious for unexpected expenses, and any slip in labor schedules or material deliveries could inflate the budget further. Yet, despite these challenges, the Portal North Bridge remains a turning point for rail in the Northeast. To understand why, 
we need to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture. Gateway and the NEC. The Portal North Bridge isn't just a replacement bridge. It's part of the Gateway Program, a sweeping plan to modernize the Northeast Corridor. The NEC is the busiest passenger rail line in the Western Hemisphere. It supports more than 2,200 trains per day, carrying both passengers and freight, and it generates billions in economic activity. Yet much of its infrastructure is more than 100 years old. The Gateway Program aims to change that, with projects like a new tunnel under the Hudson River, expanded Penn Station capacity, and system-wide upgrades. The Portal North Bridge is one of its flagship projects, often described as the first domino in a much larger transformation. That's why so much federal funding has been directed here. In 2021, the Federal Transit Administration awarded $766 million, followed by contributions from Amtrak, NJ Transit, and the Federal Highway Administration. The bipartisan infrastructure law has also been a critical funding source. Together, these investments are intended not just to fix one bridge, but to prove that the U.S. can finally deliver modern rail infrastructure on a scale comparable to Europe or Asia. So, where does that leave us? The Portal North Bridge is far more than just steel and concrete. It represents a promise that America's busiest rail corridor can be made faster, more reliable, and more resilient for the next century. But at the same time, challenges remain. Frequent track closures, environmental permitting, financial oversight, and the ever-presented risk of delays all threaten to complicate the path forward. If all goes well, by 2027 the Portal North Bridge will be fully operational, and by 2028 the old bridge will be gone for good. Whether it becomes a model for future infrastructure, or another cautionary tale, depends on how well the final stages are managed. So what do you think? Is the Portal North Bridge enough to finally end the nightmare of train delays on the Northeast Corridor? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the world of rail.